everyone. Welcome to today's Learn with Google webinar on technical implementation of Google Tag Manager. My name is Sarah Moked, and I'm a marketer here at Google, and I'm really excited about today's webinar. We had a great webinar back in November to introduce the basic ideas about Google Tag Manager, and today our focus is really how to get it implemented, the best practice to make sure you've got things working right. We have two really great speakers today, Dean Glassenberg, who's our global sales lead for Google Tag Manager, and Rob Murray, who's our engineering manager. So you'll be hearing from them in a couple of minutes. But before we get to the good stuff, I do have to do just a few housekeeping items. Um, the first thing is that we did have that part one intro webinar, as I mentioned. And you can see that one on YouTube at this link here. And we also have that link available for you in the um, console link. Today's webinar will be recorded. We always get that question, yes, I promise you we're recording it. Um, we're not able to share the, the deck, but we do have the recording available probably in about a week after today's webinar. You'll get an email about that, and we'll also post it on the Google Analytics blog. And then um, there's several widgets that you'll see at the bottom of your webinar console. So really important one is that Q&A widget. You can ask us questions at any time during the webinar via chat, and we'll do our best to respond to you. We have a couple of uh, people on hand who can respond. And then we'll also be taking some live questions at the end based on those uh, chat questions that have come in during the course of the webinar. Second one is that little uh, thing that looks like a folder. That's our resources uh, tab, which has got a lot of different links in it. Any link that we mention during the webinar today should be included in that resources link. There's also several other helpful, helpful links, so I definitely recommend taking a look at that. Um, if you'd like to share socially, we definitely recommend that using hashtag measure on Google Plus and Twitter. And then finally, really important, make sure you fill out that survey before you leave. We obviously want to hear your feedback, and it's important for us. But there's also an opportunity to win a Nexus 7 if you uh, do fill out that survey. So please definitely enter. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dean. Dean, uh, please take it away. Cool. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and thanks, everyone, for your attention. First thing I have to say off the bat, um, I am definitely not American. I am Australian. So I will try and speak a little bit slower. And please forgive me uh, if you don't understand, but I will try and uh, speak a little bit easier for you guys. So on to the webinar. First of all, I'm really excited to show you guys the next level of uh, Google Tag Manager. We've had some great feedback from the introduction webinar. And based off that, we've decided to create this technical webinar. So this technical webinar will go through a more in-depth look of how the product operates and how flexible Google Tag Manager can really be. So what we're going to be covering today is a step-by-step -step migration. That is, each of the steps involved in getting Google Tag Manager implemented on your site, advanced use cases, and a demo. Uh, this is going to be led by um, our engineering manager of Google Tag Manager, Robert Murray. And lastly, will be best practices and then a Q&A. So before getting into the juicy details, I wanted to talk to you first about why we built Google Tag Manager. So as marketing becomes more and more sophisticated, there's a lot more information that's out there which can be collected. With this large volume of information comes challenges that, uh, with the ever-growing number of tags which our customers are having to deal with. Some of these challenges include delays to tag deployment, in which in some cases can actually lead to nine months of getting one single tag on a page, okay, which can obviously delay campaigns and you know, marketing tool deployment, etc. Or it's a simple fact that each page may have too many, page, too many tags on that single page, which obviously slows down page load. So that's latency. So what we're trying to do is, taking the current state of your site, which is taking all those different tracking tags, which are located on all those different pages, and consolidating that into one single tag, the Google Tag Manager tag. It's going to make it much, much easier for agencies, marketers, and IT teams to get the data they want without having to bother the IT, uh, the IT, IT folks themselves. So we built Google Tag Manager with a few core principles in mind to address these problems. Firstly, marketing agility. There's no need to wait to get tags live on site, such as during code, per code freeze periods. Once uh, Google Tag Manager is installed, both marketers and agencies can simply add tags when required without the in with very little involvement of the IT team. Secondly is dependable data. We obviously want to share the value of dependable data. 
With dependable data, marketers and agencies will develop deeper and richer insights, making for smart decisions for each campaign. Thirdly, we've got to try and make it quick and easy. So marketers, agencies, and IT folks are all empowered to make these changes, not just the IT folks themselves. So, as you know, we launched back in October 1st, and a lot of our customers have been playing around with it. So what have our customers actually thought? Well, we had a fantastic response to the product, and a lot of people who are, are really super happy with the product itself. So I wanted to highlight one of those, GoPro and Analytics Pros. GoPros are the makers of those cool, waterproof extreme cameras for diving, jumping out of planes, all that kind of cool stuff, as well as Analytics Pros. So Analytics Pros are one of our certified implementation vendors. So GoPro worked with Analytics Pros and found that it gave their marketing team and analytics teams much more flexibility when it came to having, uh, without having to burden their IT guys. Their actual installation spans two content management systems as well as two e-commerce uh, platforms, so it's a pretty complex installation, and they've been really happy with the enterprise-level feature set of Google Tag Manager. So, let's get into the meat of the presentation with an in-depth look at the step-by-step -step migration. So after speaking with a lot of our customers and working internally, we developed a simple eight-step process for getting Google Tag Manager live on your site. We have a great technical cheat sheet which goes into additional details about this process and can be found uh, on the short link that you see there, as well as preloaded pre in the resources widget in your webinar screen. I'm also going to go through each of these different steps in further detail in the slides following. So, number one. First of all, it's a matter of creating your account and your container. Once that's done, you need to take a step back. Sit down with your IT team as well as your marketing teams to discuss what overall data collection goals you have and what you're trying to measure. Okay? Once you've done that, it's step three. So that is a matter of installing Google Tag Manager across every page of your site. This should be done in conjunction with step four. That is APIs, also, also known as the data layer. Here, what we're essentially doing is taking the map that you created in step two and translating that live onto your page by installing the container code snippet as well as um, adding your APIs. So, once the GTM snippet is installed and the uh, data layer has been configured, it's step five. So this is now a matter of working within the Google Tag Manager user interface by adding rules and macros to fire those tags based on a set of conditions and rules that you define. Following that, we have step six. This involves testing out your configuration before step seven, which is um, essentially migrating and pushing those live. Once you're happy with the current configuration, it's a matter of migration where you simul simultaneously remove the hard code tags from your site and then publish those changes live. Okay, so step one. First step is to create an account at google.com slash tag manager. As, as mentioned in the previous webinar, this is a free product, so feel free to log in and check it out after the webinar. Once you've signed in, it will ask you if you'd like to create an account in the container. It is our best practice that you create one account per company and one company, sorry, one container per domain. So say, for example, you have a large airline which have, might have multiple region-specific websites, each of those different websites managing different sets of tags. So in this situation, we recommend creating one account for that airline and then one container within that account for each of the different regions within that. Following that, once you've set up your account and your container, it's a matter of managing your user permissions. This is adding users um, that have the ability to view, edit, delete, or publish, or any combination of those at both the account and the container level. So we're just trying to focus in on you know, the enterprise level uh, usability of Google Tag Manager itself. Next is mapping the site. Now, this is a great opportunity for marketing teams and IT teams to evaluate what they currently measure and what data they want to be collecting following the installation of a tag management solution like Google Tag Manager. 
What you may want to do is track your site mapping details in a spreadsheet. So we recommend looking at what events you want to measure through your rules, what data you want to collect through your macros, and which vendors you want to use to track, your ta track that data, that is, through your tags. Okay, so at this stage, we've created our container, we've created our account, and we've installed, um, we've basically had, we've mapped our site. Now it's a matter of installing the code. It is best practice to actually install Google Tag Manager across every page of your site at the top of the body. Now there's one exception here. The only exception is when you actually install the data layer um, or, or the API above the Google Tag Manager snippet, but below the opening body tag. As highlighted, this is actually an asynchronous tag. This asynchronous solution greatly assists with latency as it fires all tags required for that specific page at the same time. This is an opposite effect of the current state of affairs. That is, that tags would normally fire in a waterfall fashion, which slows down the load time of your page, making it harder for users to get to this content. So this is why we rec that's why an asynchronous solution will greatly assist with latency. So, fourth, this is the adding the data layer APIs. As mentioned previously, this step should be done in conjunction with installing the Google Tag Manager snippet, which is step three. Now, to ensure maximum flexibility, Google Tag Manager functions best deployed when alongside a data layer. A data layer is an object that contains all the information that you want to pass to Google Tag Manager. Information such as events or variables can be passed to Google Tag Manager via the data layer and rules can be set up in Google Tag Manager based on values of variables or based on a specific event. As seen in the, in the highlighted script down the, bo down the bottom, the data layer needs to be situated above the Google Tag Manager snippet, but directly below the opening body tag. What you see in blue is the initialization of the data layer. What's in black is an example of the data layer object and what's in red is where the Google Tag Manager snippet should lie. Okay, so step five and step six. So at this stage, you've installed Google Tag Manager across your site, and you've implemented the data layer object for maximum flexibility. Now it's time to actually turn to Google Tag Manager itself. Add your tags, your rules, and your macros. Once you've deployed the Google Tag Manager snippet across your entire site, it enables the preview and debug mode. So when you've added your tags and your rules and your macros, it's a matter of testing and previewing your site to ensure that all the steps you went through were correctly processed and working as you intended them to be. So this is, this is essentially done prior to publishing directly in your site. So think of it as a, as a QA environment. Rob will shortly be going through an in-depth live demo of this portion um, uh, of this installation process. Okay, so step seven and step eight. This is, this is the last step in the migration. This will require both the marketing and the IT teams to work together. Some of the things that they need to understand include what tags need to be migrated, when those tags, when that migration is going to happen, you know, whether it be a site-wide migration or whether portions of the site will actually be migrated across, and when that um, timeline is actually going to occur. So, Google Tag Manager almost brings together both the marketing and the IT teams to, to really, you know, deploy Google Tag Manager, the t Google Tag Manager snippet itself. So, once you're actually happy with the configuration, it's a matter of simultaneously removing your hard-coded tags and publishing uh, the changes with, from within Google Tag Manager itself. Okay, so, now that we understand the step-by-step -step migration, Let's get a little deeper with advanced use cases and, of course, the demo. So, on this slide, I wanted to give you a high-level understanding of how Google Tag Manager is structured from top to bottom. First, at the topmost level is the account. As mentioned earlier, it's, re it's recommended to have one account per company, so in this example, we have used the large airline company. Secondly, within an account, um, you can have multiple containers. And, one and we recommend to have one container per domain. So say, for example, that we were going through earlier, uh, we recommend to have one container per, per region-specific um, site. 
And again, we also recommend to have Google Tag Manager snippet at the top of the body. Then from within the container, this is where you add your tags and you apply your rules and macros. This is essentially where you uh, manage the conditional firing of both Google and third-party tags. Okay, so using the data layer. As mentioned earlier, the data layer allows for greater portability and flexibility, allowing you to pass information into Google Tag Manager. So rather than referencing variables, transaction information, page categories, and other important signals scattered throughout your page, Google Tag Manager is designed to easily reference information that you put into the, da the data layer. It is recommended the data layer object is placed after the opening body. The data layer is hugely customizable, but we have a number of suggested variable names found at the link within the slide. This can also be uh, available in the developer's documents. So, understanding Google Tag Manager's events. As you'd expect, everything that happens within Google Tag Manager happens in response to an event. And two events happen automatically. First of all is the gtm.js event. That is a default event when, container snip, when, the, when, excuse me, when the container snippet actually loads. The second one is the gtm.dom event. This is when the page finishes loading itself. If you want to have tags fire on any other events, you need to tell GTM about it in the, G, in the data layer dot push event, in an event handler. For further details on Google Tag Manager events, you can find them in the developer's docs found in the resources widgets that Sarah referred to earlier. Okay, so demo time. So I'm actually going to pass it over to Rob shortly, um, and he's going to run you through uh, essentially, you know, how the product works in a live environment. So Rob, take it away. Great. Thank you, Dean. Uh, before we start the demo, um, the demo will show up in a pop-up. So please take a few moments to turn off your pop-up blocker if you have it turned on. Um, if it doesn't work, if you actually, when we start the demo, you don't see a new open window open for you, you should see a link that says launch screen share appearing in the slide window area. Please hold down the control key on your keyboard and click the link and that should bypass any pop-up blockers you have installed. I haven't popped it up yet. I'll do that in a moment. Uh, what we're going to talk about in the demo is really take a look at a sort of more advanced use of Tag Manager than just uh, firing a tag on every single page. We're going to have a page that we're going to instrument with some data in the data layer. In the data layer. We're going to have a special tag that fires on a macro, uh, sorry, on a rule that, that fires as we manipulate the page. We'll also look at um, some e an, an example of e-commerce. So let me go ahead and bring up the screen share. I've clicked the green button. Whoop. There we are. So you should be seeing our cool, awesome travel site. And so what we'll do is we will go ahead and um, you know, the, the, the site is already instrumented with a tag. We can navigate through and see some interesting things. I'm going to take you to this page right here, which is the page where we actually select how many people are going and calculate the price before we go to checkout. Um, what we would like to do for this study is actually understand better how people are using this drop-down control. Um, so we don't want to actually know what happens when the page refreshes. We already have a regular old Google Analytics tag in here to track that. We just like to know are people how are people trying different prices? Are they looking at different numbers? We would like to fire an event every time this drop down changes value, even though I have not yet hit a submit. So how do we do this? Let's go ahead and look at the source for this page. So I will do view source. There's a couple things I want to show you in this source. First of all, here is the standard Google Tag Manager snippet. None of this works if you don't have your page tagged with Google Tag Manager. This is on every page for this site. The only other change I had to do this for this page was for the event that fires when I toggle that control, which is down here. That's this piece of JavaScript here. We added one piece of code back here at the bottom. Let's see if I can make that a little bigger to see.
which was we pushed on the data layer three pairs. The unit price, that is the price per ticket, how many tickets we bought, and an event. This pushing of, an, of the key value pair where the key is event is what actually causes the event to fire. And if Google Tag Manager is listening for this event, things to happen. We can name the event anything we want. I happen to have chosen the name select for this event. But remember that name because we will later on have to write a rule in Google Tag Manager that, uh, that uh, looks for this event. Now that code is already in the website, but that's not actually going to do anything when I fire that tag because there's nothing in Google Tag Manager listening for it. So let's go to Google Tag Manager and actually um, go ahead and, and set this up. So I'll go ahead, log into Google Tag Manager. Nope, oh, wrong one. Let's do this in incognito window. So here is my account for this demo. I have one container, which is the container we're manipulating for this site. So I'll click through to there. So what I want to do is I want to fire a special tracking tag, which I have already figured, configured here, that will basically just be a custom GIF tag. I want that to fire whenever I manipulate that control. Right now you'll see that there is no rule associated with this tag. So this tag, when there is no rule, will never fire. So let's go ahead and add a rule. So I go up here, I click the new bu rule button. I can name the rule anything I like. I'll say select event fired. The event is one of our macros that's already there. And what was the name of our event? It was select. And actually it's probably safer to say equals select. I save that event. So now the event is defined, but I have not yet associated it with my tracking tag. So I go back to my tracking tag. I add a rule to fire the tag here. And it turns out that this, this now that I've defined the event that's in my list, I can just select it here. Um, I also could have created a new rule right from this dropdown if I wanted to. I've now associated the event with this tag, and I've saved it. Now at this point, the most common mistake people make is they go right over the website and try to see what's happening and, and just that, gosh, it's not working right. And the reason for that is I have not actually published anything. So I've made this change here locally. So let's go ahead and um, create a new version. And before I actually, um, uh, before I actually, uh, want to publish this, let's go ahead and preview and debug this. So I've turned on debug mode. What does this do? This sets a cookie in my browser here that um, basically tells this browser to use the debugged version of the container, not the production version of the container. And so I actually, um, let me go ahead and copy this URL over to the right browser. And you'll see that because I'm running debug mode, I now see down here a debug console. Nobody else in production is seeing this, only me. So you can see here that two things happened when I came to this page. I already have a regular old Google Analytics page tracking tag on this site. This fired. The select tracking tag did not fire because I didn't do what makes it fire, which is to adjust this. So now if I change this value, I see now the select tracking tag fired on the event called select. So this is how I can use the debug mode to confirm that yes, things are working. I really do have my event ready. Now here's an advanced feature. If you really want to look carefully at what happened, I'm in Chrome, I can bring down under the tools, the developer tools console, look at network. And now this will actually let me, um, as, I, as, I, as I manipulate this, look at the, the tag that I fired, I can see, if I click into it, the detailed of what was in the tag. You can actually navigate around here if you have some details of the tag that you need to see. 
But for this demo, we're just going to say, okay, we did fire the tag. It's now doing the right thing. But, so, so, but we haven't published yet. Remember, don't forget to publish. So let's go back to Google Tag Man. We're done previewing. So I'll exit. We're now out of preview mode. So now I'm going to go ahead and publish. It may take a few moments to publish. When, one thing you should know that when you are debugging user Google Tag Manager is that the t Google Tag Manager payload is cached in your browser. So that if you make a change and you want to see that change in this same browser, you have to do a hard refresh, which on this browser is Control Shift Refresh. Notice that I do not have the debug console anymore, but if I go down and open up the tools, developer tools, and look at network, I should still be firing the tag when I change. Let's see if I did not refresh properly. It does take a few moments for the publish to actually find its way out to all the production web servers. So now you can see, yes, in fact, um, as I make every time I change this, I'm firing another tag. But it would be nice if the tag were actually giving me some more information. For instance, information about what number did I actually select, because I just fire the same event every time I do this. So let's go ahead back and look at the, uh, let's go see how we would do that. It turns out that the data I want, if I look at the page source, is already there because I put it in the data layer. So right up here in the data layer, I've initialized the data layer with the various pieces of data that we need, including, in this case, the ticket count, which is the number of tickets that was selected. So let's go back to Google Tag Manager. I don't have to touch the code here. I can go back to Google Tag Manager. Go look at uh, my tag. And let's go ahead and have the tag also include that, um, that, that data variable. So I have to do two things for this. I have to expose it to Google Tag Manager in a macro, and then I have to use that macro in my tag. So let's go ahead and add a new macro. I'll call it um, ticket count. The macro type is a data layer variable. So there are various other things you can use to drive macros also, but let's use the data layer variable here. Um, and I just, let me go and make sure I have the right name here. I believe I called it ticket count camel case with a lower case T and uppercase C. I don't need a default value. And now I will go into my tracking tag. And I'll go ahead and add an extra value at the end here. And count equals. Now I could actually type in the name of the macro, but since I've defined the macro, this little pop-up here will actually show me the list of all the currently defined macros. That's this guy, and I, there it is. I've now gone ahead and added this macro to my tag. We'll save it. Again, I haven't published it. In the interest of time, I'm going to uh, go ahead and just go ahead and publish. Since this is a demo site, you should, of course, really in the real world do a debug. We'll go back to my luxury travel site. We'll do a hard refresh to make sure I'm getting the latest. And now we'll bring down the uh, developer console here. And if you actually look at this tag here, no, oh, we didn't get it yet. Oh, th there it is. Count is four. So this shows, in fact, I am passing the value along with the tag um, that I am, uh, the, as, as I click this, if I go ahead and do this to something else, and I click on this one, we should see that the value is, the count is one. Now suppose you didn't really want to do to use the data layer here, or you had not set up the data layer, you could still do this 
by changing the macro, the kit count here, from data layer variable to JavaScript variable. So if you actually have the ticket count in a JavaScript variable, you can go ahead and, and use it here. Also, when we are done with this, this test, we've gathered all the data, we want it to stop sending tags every, every time someone does this, it's very easy. You simply go to the tracking tag, remove the rule, save it, Create a new version and publish. And at this point, again, I have to refresh. Don't forget to refresh. No longer sending tags. You can turn this on as often as you want. As, as you want. So that, that's an example of how we turn on this event tracking we tracked the traffic and then turned it off when we were done. And by the way, you might say, well, what isn't, isn't, aren't we still firing an event? Doesn't it have some cost? And the answer is not really. It's all done client side, and we're very smart in our code about pruning events that we know nobody is looking for. So for one more example, let's go to our checkout page. Let's buy that. So this is, we want to show an example of the Google Analytics e-commerce tag. Normally, you would fire the e-commerce tag on a page like this, which is your thank you page that says, yes, we've actually completed the transaction. How do you set that up in this page? Let's again do a view source. All you really have to do in your page is set your data layer properly. Now, these names are not arbitrary. These names are the names that the Google Analytics e-commerce tag will be looking for in your data layer. You have to, and these, this is the minimum set that's required. You need a transaction ID, a transaction total, and a list of one or more products. Here we've just selected one product. Each product needs a name, SKU, price, and quantity. Once these are properly initialized in your data layer, there's nothing else you have to do to this page to actually use the Google Analytics e-commerce tag. We simply go to Google Tag Manager, I've already set up the Google Analytics e-commerce tag with my web property ID. But what I hope you notice here is that the track type is not the usual page view that you may be using if you're just tracking page views. It's called transaction. Now, am I done? Not yet. I actually have to fire this tag somewhere. Where do I fire the tag? On my thank you page. So let's make a rule that will be true on my thank you page. New rule. Let's call it thank you page, and the URL contains thank you, which I, I know is, is in the URL of the, of the page that we had. Save. Now I go back to my e-commerce tag. I add a rule, which this should fire on the thank you page. Save. Let's go ahead and debug this one. Create version, preview, and debug. I'm now in preview and debug mode for this version of the con container. While I'm here, I'll point out that, by the way, if you want to know what one of these older versions did, it's perfectly okay to go back to an older version and go into preview and debug mode on that older version to see what it did. Again, that will not affect any other browser but this one. There's a cookie in this browser that tells Google Tag Manager, go ahead and use that version of the container for this browser here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the, oh, no, actually, I should just do a shift. And here we have the GA tracking fired on tag manager load and the e-commerce page fired on uh, tag, fired on page tag manager load. I already had GA page, page tracking on the whole site, but here you can see e-commerce fired. And again, if you want to see what that looks like in detail, we can go to the developer tools. I'll go ahead and refresh. Lots of things fire on this page, but in fact, what you care about are these three different utm.gif page uh, tags. One of them is for the Google Analytics page tracking. One of them is fired for the transaction. And then there is another tag that's fired for every line item in the transaction. We only had one in this case. So here we are, we are now firing Google Analytics tags in our debug mode. So that looks like that's working fine. We will exit debug mode and we will publish. And we're done. We have now enabled 
um, e-commerce for our new our site. So that's the demo uh, of using events to uh, basically instrument your page and do e-commerce, and we'll turn it back to Dean. Cool. Thanks, Rob. Sorry, I'm just going to give him a chance to close that down. Um, so now we've had a chance to check out the demo capabilities. Let's let's check out some of the common pitfalls and the best practices within Google Tag Manager. Okay, so first of all, the pitfalls. The first thing is not to place the GTM snippet in the head. GTM has an iframe and is not supported to have an iframe in the head. The next point is don't have GTM that don't place the GTM snippet in a child element of the body tag. In other words, place it directly under the opening body tag outside of any other elements of the body. The third point there is structure. As mentioned previously, don't declare the dart layer after the Google Tag Manager snippet. You should always declare it before the snippet um, or use the push syntax. You can always check all of these pitfalls in a handy Chrome extension called Tag, Assist Tag Assistant by Google. And it's downloadable in the Chrome Web Store and should also be available in the, the resources folder um, which Sarah alluded to earlier. Okay, so the next best practice, separation. Always separate your tags um, whenever possible, okay? So that is using templates wherever possible. We, we recommend not to use custom HTML for any AdWords conversion tracking tags, as well as not to use custom HTML for multiple tags. So what that means is putting multiple tags within, the single, uh, within a single HTML template. So the best practice here is only use one tag per template. The next question I get fairly often is, how does Google Tag Manager work with AND and OR functions? Okay, so a single rule is an AND of conditions. So multiple conditions can be added to a rule and all of these need to be satisfied before the rule is satisfied. If the rule is satisfied, the tag will fire. A tag can be made, can have an OR of rules. That is, if you have, uh, so if one rule is satisfied, it will fire. If you have multiple rules applied to the same tag, if one of those rules is satisfied, it will fire based off that rule. If the, other, if the other rule which is associated to that same tag is not satisfied, the tag will not fire in that circumstance. Next is to reduce and reuse. As mentioned earlier, avoid duplicate tags and rules by using macros. So, Say you've got a Google Analytics tracking code for different domains. Okay? You'd set the UAID in the data layer under a new variable called, for example, GA underscore ID. Then create a data layer macro for GA ID within the Google Tag Manager product itself. Then use the GA ID macro in your Google Analytics tag. Okay? The result is one tag instead of um, different tags for, sorry, instead of separate tags for each domain. The, th the third best practice is leveraging existing markup and reducing code. When implementing the data layer and event handlers, we recommend using the existing names and ideas, uh, IDs to make your code light and reusable. Here's an example of how we can use existing names and IDs to uniquely name GTM events. The last one, and the most common, would probably be related back to uh, naming conventions. We have a, a lot of naming convention uh, best practices there, and I'm not going to rattle off each of them, um, but I just want to highly recommend that having a good understanding of the nomenclature of what you intend to use when setting up your accounts and containers does go a long way. This will make adding tags, rules, and macros a lot easier to understand when you start to use Google Tag Manager itself. So this goes back to the, the mapping piece uh, that we mentioned in step two. So if you can develop a nomenclature at the same time, it will greatly help when it comes to setting up within Google Tag Manager. Finally, is the currently incompatible tags and workarounds. 
I want to highlight here that it's by no means the end of the road. Okay. So firstly, don't use custom HTML to deploy AdWords conversion tracking or remarketing tags. We do have AdWords conversion tracking and remarketing tag templates, so please use those. In, in general, we recommend seeing if there's a way to remove document.write elements from a tag and replacing it with a document.create element or other elements and test to ensure that those, that does actually ensure the correct functionality. And lastly, we also know that a lot of our customers use Adobe Site Catalyst. So we wanted to show more broadly the simple change required so that these tags will work correctly within GTM. So following this presentation, uh, you can kind of review it. And if you use uh, uh, Adobe Site Catalyst Omniture, um, feel free to look at the code we've placed there. Um, and we're currently working to support A-B testing tags and more in the near future. So um, definitely uh, stay on the lookout for what we've got coming up down the line. So next steps. You've sat through the webinar and you're thinking to yourself, well, what do I do next? The most important piece that I can't reiterate enough is to ensure that you have the right team working with you. That is both from the IT team and the marketing team to assure everyone's on the same page. Following that, check out the technical cheat sheet found in the resources widget. And if you still have questions, feel, the re feel free to reach out to the forum um, or reach out to one of our certified partners. That concludes our session on the advanced implementation techniques with Google Tag Manager. But I want to say thanks again for listening in, and I'm looking forward to showing you more exciting material in the future. Thanks so much, Dean. Uh, this was really great, and thank you so much, Rob, for um, doing a great presentation. Uh, we really um, want to thank all the users. We've had a lot of great questions come in during the course of this call. So we're going to take some time now to have some Q&A with, um, with Rob and with Dean as well. So I'm going to look back at some of the questions that came in during the course of the meeting. And of course, you can continue to ask more questions uh, as, we, as we go through. So um, the first question um, that we just want to start out with, because this is one that we, we get a lot and it's, it's something that is important, is uh, do I have to migrate all of my tags? Fantastic question. Okay, so do you need to migrate all of your tags? We highly recommend migrating all measurement and, and marketing tags site-wide to ensure that you can actually take advantage of all Google Tag Manager's uh, feature set. But if you really want to only migrate some of those tags or deploy, deploy Google Tag Manager only on, on your, excuse me, or only deploy it on a subset of pages, Google Tag Manager will work just fine. So it's quite flexible in that regard. Great, thank you so much. Um, then I had another uh, question uh, for how would I set up with remarketing with Google Analytics in Google Tag Manager? So, so I can take this one. This yeah. is Rob. Yep, Rob is here. Um, so there, it, that's actually quite easy to do. Um, when you add the Google Analytics tag um, in the new um, uh, in the template, there's a checkbox that says Add Display Advertiser Support. Just check that box, and that will set up the support for remarketing. And there's a link there you can click when you check that that will take you to some pages that explains you know, what to do next. Great. Um, could you briefly explain why the Google Tag Manager tag cannot be called in the header, such as the analytics asynchronous tracking code, for example? Yeah, I, I can take that one, actually, uh, Dean. Um, the problem is um, it actually works okay for the JavaScript case, but um, if you have, if you, if, if you are not, if your user does not have JavaScript enabled, um, and it is executing the code that we use for the NoScript option, um, that code requires us to use an iframe, and that won't work properly uh, if it's in the head. Okay, thank you. This is another one I think um, for Rob. Uh, does an empty data layer need to be declared if you're going to push data into it later during page events? Uh, it's a good idea to do it, but if the data layer does not exist when we execute the GTM snippet, we will create it empty at that point. So as long as you're, you're pushing things after the GTM snippet, that should be fine. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and. Uh, could you please talk a little bit about the uh, situation with mobile sites? So if it's a mobile client versus, you know, mobile.client.com versus client.com, would I require two different containers in that case? 
Well, given that we're talking about the mobile web, um, as opposed to um, uh, you know the mobile mobile applications, um, you know basically the web is the web as far as Google Tag Manager is concerned. So that should not be um, you know some sort of tremendously different approach to, hand, to, to managing a, a website when it's when it's seen across a mobile a device. Okay, but would you recommend two different containers, or would you recommend uh, just one container in that case? Well, it depends on whether you're, it's really up to you, right? It depends on whether you're going to be managing the rules and what fires separately for your mobile devices than for, um, uh, for uh, your regular devices. And in particular, now you can do this by having different containers. If there's some JavaScript variable or, or other thing that you can key on, you can set up rules that actually fire for only one or the other. Okay, thank you. So we're going to um, take several more questions, but I just want to remind you uh, for any people who do have to leave now, please uh, don't forget to fill out that survey before you go. You can just click on the little red widget in your console that kind of looks like it's got a checkbox on it. And as a reminder, there is a possibility to uh, win a Nexus 7 if you do fill out that survey, so please do that before you go. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take some more questions now. Um, so I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of questions come in around cross-domain tracking and best practices for subdomains. Uh, can you kind of just talk through, Rob, what, what the best practices would be there? Well, I mean, it's, it's basically those are, you want to fire your, uh, your Google Analytics tags the same way as you, you would if you were not using Google Tag Management. So that's, um, it is, it's a best practice to have um, a separate container on each domain, but that's not actually something that's enforced by us. Um, you want to have no more than one container on the page, but if the same container is on multiple domains, uh, that will be fine. We do have some users who do that and then use specific rules to fire subsets of, of, of shared um, shared information. Now there is one issue with uh, the GA tag that is in the template, doesn't yet have the cross-domain support, but um, we're working on that and that will be ready very soon. Great. Um, and then uh, here's another common one that we, we get a lot, so I just wanted to, to call this out. Um, and I think, you know, Dean or Rob, you can take this. Can, can hard-coded tags and Google Tag Manager coexist? Is it required to remove all my other tracking tags? Uh, yeah, that's sort of the same question I think that Dean covered before. Yeah. Uh, they coexist just fine. Uh, you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to take out your other tracking tags. Um, they're, they will coexist just fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I think we're um, probably going to take about three or four more questions. Um, so let me just take a look. Sorry, a bunch more have just come in, so I'm just sorting through here. Uh, so uh, does Google Tag Manager play well with analytics.js? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, so the, for folks who are not aware, analytics.js is um, the new version of the Google Analytics tracking tag. Um, it is uh, still in whitelist only, so um, if you haven't heard of it, that's why. Um, the answer is um, it plays reasonably well now, and within a, a very short amount of time, it will have its own template uh, that will support directly support analytics.js. But again, just because the t you see the template, you'll also see a disclaimer that says um, this will only work today if you're on the whitelist. Okay, thanks. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, you need to be on the whitelist. Don't forget that. <laughs> um, okay. So and, and, and Google Analytics does we Google Tag Manager doesn't know if you're on the whitelist. We'll show that option for, to everybody, but with that warning. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Rob. Um, and uh, if we add Google Analytics through Google Tag Manager, can you use existing events that are on the page, or do they have to go through the data layer? Um, so the, <clears throat> I think the question is, can I write JavaScript, can I write rules that refer to existing events that are on the page? Yeah, that, I think that's how I'd read it as well. That makes sense to me. Well, the thing is, though, that the, right now the mechanism for firing events in Google Tag Manager is pushing an event onto the data layer. So um, we do need, we do, we don't listen for other events. We do need to have that event pushed onto there in order for it to fire a GTM, uh, a, a GTM um, event. Okay. So basically, they would, they would need to go ahead and make sure that they are yeah. using the data layer. Yes. Okay. Um, can two employees simultaneously work with Google Tag Manager, or could there then be a problem with publishing the changes? 
Well, two employees can, but right now um, what we cannot do is publish, you know, some intermediate state. Basically, what you do is you publish a version of the container. So if two employees are using, uh, the, are, are in the same container, they do have to coordinate and make sure that you can agree on a version of the container that is good to be published for all of the tags that are in the container. We do not yet support, and we, we think about it sometimes, we've heard the request, we don't support independent publishing of tags in the container. You have to publish the whole container uh, as a version. Okay, thanks. So I'm uh, just going to take two more questions now, and then we're going to close it out. Uh, again, just a quick reminder, please do fill out that survey before you leave. Uh, and so let's just see what else we have that has just come in. Um, you know, hang on one second. I'm sorry, this just got a little... Uh, okay, what if we don't have access to our customer's source code and want to track different events like you showed? So I think this is probably a case coming from an agency, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's a request we get. We don't have an answer for that today. We're thinking hard about it. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's just take uh, one more question, and then we will close it out. So um, for our... Final question. Um, I'm sorry, there's just a little slight delay here with the questions coming in. I apologize for the delay. Can you uh, just explain a little bit more detail about how the DOM attribute and the DOM text macros actually work and when and how you should use those? I'm not, uh, the, let me. Shall I reread it? Yeah, reread it, please. Can you explain a little bit how the DOM attribute and the DOM text macros actually work and when and how to use them? Yeah, hold on. Let me, let me bring up something here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just give me a, a moment offhand. Yeah, so that's basically um, when I, I was asking for the right, for the right answer from, from someone who was helping me here. So basically, when you need to pull data out of the page, um, you can fetch a string out of, let's say, the, if you want the, the ID of a DOM element that, that, that is, you're referencing in the page, uh, that's how you would use them, just as, as if you're using JavaScript macros. It's, you know, for stuff that's in your page that's not in the data layer. Okay. All right, well, thank you again, Rob, and thank you, Dean, for your great work today. Um, and thanks so much to all the audience members who attended. Um, we're really glad you could be with us. And just as a reminder, we will be uh, doing a blog post on the Google Analytics blog uh, probably in about a week, and you'll also receive an email that will notify you of the recording. Uh, so please do fill out that survey before you leave. And thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.